Now let's begin our discussion with highlights of the strategic importance of developing a more integrated approach in addressing issues and challenges in the tourism city and of course city sorry tourism industry to learn more about their insights on regional and local tourism policies and practices we will hear their thoughts and answers first up once again mayor of cebu city mayor rama round of applause for mayor rama once again also joining us mayor of general luna all the way from shargao mayor sol madugas And the mayor of Panglao, Bohol, Mayor Edgardo Boy Arcai. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we have a trifecta. Bohol, Shargao, Cebu, places, the destinations that we truly love. Also joining us in this panel discussion is the president of ASEAN Tourism Association, Mr. Eddie Somawilga. Let's give him a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our first session, our first panel. Join us as we talk and learn from this. Before anything else, let me check my time. Maayong bu hindi na buntag. Maayong hapon. Maayong uutu hapon. Thank you for the lessons, Mayor. Okay, let's begin. Maybe let me start off with Sir Eddie to talk about a little about your association or your what is it all about, so they could know. Okay, uh, thank you for the invitation. I think the event is very uplifting for all of us. Even myself, coming out from the Philippines, I rarely experience this kind of event, uh, which I think award this will create strong motivation to keep up the good work and perhaps uh, create more better job in tourism. In terms of ASEANTA uh, or ASEAN Tourism Association, our office is based in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, our member is actually NTOs uh, and then travel agent association as well as hotel association and airline. I myself coming from airline, I'm working in AirAsia, Indonesia. And at the first of the pandemic, we are focusing on how we are advocating the reopening of the borders. Uh, one of the attempts that we did is actually to read QR code on vaccine. Uh, at the beginning, we, we tried to have it in AS all ASEAN level, but I think we have some challenges in terms. So we start with country by country. So we start with Indonesia, and then Malaysia, and then Thailand. Then we, fo we follow by the rest of the country. So I think that's what we have in the pandemic situation. Before anything else, thank you for your work. Second, you almost had us fooled. Everyone thought you were Filipino. Eh, but that's a compliment, of course. So thank you so much for flying in and being here. Now, the easy questions out. The harder question now. Earlier on, we heard Sir Joey mention that you know, he's been to Indonesia, all of these places, all beautiful. But of course, we know the Philippines, we know our beaches. So the question will go to you. Maybe we can have, Sir Ed, a perspective from someone not here in the Philippines. What can the Filipinos do to actually reach that? You know, uh, pre-pandemic, I remember, let's say, Bali, Indonesia, 20 million incoming uh, tourists. We're aiming for eight, for, that's just Bali. So we're aiming for eight million, I believe, for the Philippines, okay? We're still not there, but we'll get there. Uh, so what can we do to hit that? We have the beaches, we have the beautiful people. Let us know. Yeah, I think I've been in Cebu for some time already. And I think Cebu has, for example, uh, very good infrastructure in place. I think that's the vantage of what you have and I think government has put in place all this infrastructure. Second, you have also very strong hospitality. Uh, Filipino is well known about how they serve to guests especially. I think that's two things that we appreciate and key advantages that you have in Philippines. Even outside of the Philippines, I think Filipino is very famous to work in the hospitality industry in ASEAN and Filipino is number one actually in terms of the work in, in ASEAN. 
And one other thing that we can learn from, for example, Indonesia, perhaps, uh, first, I think government is doing some prioritizing. The most important thing is actually connectivity. Um, Bali itself now has quite significant connectivity, not only within ASEAN, Middle East, but also to Europe. So government opened the airport itself to receive all many airlines that willing to serve Bali. So I think that's the thing. Then the other thing is actually, um, first, there's also a unique things that Bali has. But on top of that, government also holding international events. Uh, like last year, uh, Indonesia host for G20, where all the head of state for G20 country uh, participate in the event in Bali, which I think Bali becoming at that time is hotspot for, for the world, which everyone can see that. And it is replicated in other key destinations in Indonesia. Like in the neighboring island, for example, government built a circuit which is now being used for MotoGP. And they have annual event for the MotoGP over there. Well said. You gave it a point by point. And I hope you don't mind me adding. I would also say, I think also transportation. Because when people land, in the Philippines. I know, I'm in the tourism industry and all these foreigners always tell me from the tourism industry, you know when we land, transportation, we don't know what to take. Can we grab? Can we Uber? Do we take a taxi? And I have this experience from a friend who works in the tourism industry in another country. When she rode the taxi, the fare was 700 pesos. And then the taxi driver told her, 1,000 na po, ma'am. Why? It's raining. So she said, is it true? Your fare changes when it rains? So these are just some of the things I know we can improve. But I must say, we are very lucky today because it's truly very rare that we have all three mayors in a platform. Can we give a round of applause to Go Negosha and to these mayors who have agreed to give their time to talk? I'll begin, of course, with Mayor Rama, everyone, making his time and showing us his love for Cebu. Sir, I have to say, Cebu City, Queen City, gateway to all the other islands. How lucky are you to be here in Cebu and to have us also here? Tell us what, I don't want to talk about the past. We know what Cebu has been through. Let's talk about the future. What can we see from Cebu City in terms of tourism? Majestic. 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 And to do that, we have the private sector. You know, Shal, I'm very proud, very fortunate, being the mayor of the city of Cebu. And I look at not only the people, but the private sector. And they're here. And them being aware where we are going. Singapore like Cebu City. I highlighted early. Some thought it's my vision. It's not my vision. I'm only bringing as a messenger collective aspiration, Sean. And I wish, because I'm a very optimistic person, just like Joe in Conception. I wish I never get discouraged, no matter how. I will be bombarded. I will be, we call it uh, uh, in social media or whatnot. Because what we need for the Cebuanos, for the city of Cebu, believe in your capacity. Bring that optimism in your household. So Singapore like, start at home. Start within, start at home within and make tourism as a culture it has to be culture of excellence culture of tourism culture of history culture of heritage and culture holistically that made Cebu that I keep on re reminding Governor Gwen Garcia we are one in the name of God. 
we have our Christianity, we have our Sinulo and the Pasigarbo, that's the province. And we work as one, then who will be against us? When God is with us, who will be against us? True, wonderful message. Mayor, I know you're very busy, but let me just say this. Cebu actually lets the people of the world know about Philippines. Just look at the names of all our guests here today. They've been doing entrepreneurship, not just for their namesake, but to tell the world about craftsmanship of Filipinos, about the wonder of Filipinos. And you're very lucky, sir. Do you know that in the travel, it's very much known. I'm sure the airlines will also know this. Some of the foreigners, when you say Philippines, dati dati Manila. Ngayon, ah, Cebu. It really is the gateway. And they want to go straight. They really want to go straight here. So what is it that uniqueness that you bring? I think it's that. You said culture. The difference in culture of excellence. Really, we could say that. With all the names we have here, Sir Justin Oy, Kenneth Kopunboy, the culture of excellence is evident. Can you give your message to the tourism industry? Tourism industry. And the people who are here, of course, today. Hear me, people in the discipline of tourism. I've been 31 years serving not just Cebu, but the whole country. Because I've been president of the Councilors League, Vice Mayor's League, now president of the 148 highly urbanized and component cities. Tourism is the formula. But digitalization should be a part of tourism. And in order to do that, don't think of yourself. Think of the country. Go down, be humble, do not be too much of being arrogant. Bring the best in you, because the power in our island of Cebu is the people. It's always the people, and that's precisely I'm very proud to be a public servant, a servant, a consuming servant having the private sector. Shal, I'm telling you, I don't depend logistical support from City Hall, but the private sector, including national. Hansi, Pangilinan, Robinson, even the Bill Invest, we are all one in making Cebu number one. Tourism, take care of your people. Tourism, be human. Because it is in humanity, it is in human relation that you can make wonder and bring the best in us as Cebuano people. Thank you very much, Mayor Rama, everyone. I know you have a busy schedule, so we'd like to thank you for the time that you've given us. You are very much excused, and we are very much grateful for you for making time to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause. Mayor Rama, salamat sa pagpasok at singit sa oras po ninyo para sa amin. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. This time it's a real babu from mayor, but we still have great mayors here. Sir Ed, Mayor Rama echoed what you said. Tourism, digitalization. The QR codes that you mentioned. But this time around, I want to mention someone here. Okay, Mayor Boy. I have to say po, Panglao in the Philippines is our steady Eddie. Steady lang siya. Pero grabe ang binibigay sa tourism. Maybe we don't hear as much buzz with Panglao, with Boracay or Siargao, pero alam na alam natin pagdating sa Bohol, sigurado ka. Pag lumipad ka doon, masaya ka. You'll get nature, you'll get good food, good beaches. What is the secret of Bohol? For staying through and through, it's not out there, it's not a PR campaign, I'm just the one saying it. Panglao and Bohol has been the steady eddy of the Philippines. Anjan siya, laging mapagkakatiwalaan. You know pwede mong puntahan. You know affordable. You know maganda experience mo. 
What is the secret ingredient? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The secret of uh, tourism in Panglao is, uh, you know, we are Bulano. We are very friendly, and then uh, we are very religious, honest, and uh, also very assisting to the, the tourist people. Okay, I've been to Panglao, and of course, you do the river cruise, chocolate, you standard na yan eh. Diba? Tarshir, you see all of that. Pero makiki marites lang po ako. Okay lang ba kayo sa chismis? Makiki chismis ako kay Mayor Boy. I'm hearing big investments coming in Panglao and Bohol, sa beaches. Billions of dollars. Can you talk a, a bit about this a little bit? May mga itata yung mga beaches, bagong resorts. And all, this is coming when? 2020, soon na ba? Pwede ba pag-usapan? Pwede makichismis, Mayor? Uh, maybe it will be uh, erected by next year, ma'am. Next year na! Yeah. Wow! Ano yun? Ano, anong itatayo? Or secret muna? Uh, maraming investor na pumupunta sa akin. Mga Chinese investor, actually. And also, there is a Korean uh, investor uh, asking me to have a golf course in Panglao. And they will... Uh, bring uh, 10 flights a day to Panglao. 10 flights a day. Did you hear that? Wow. You know, the, the, the thing with Bohol is it's usually tied up with Cebu. Nakatwining yan eh. Diba? Andiyan ka na rin sa Cebu, ituloy mo na sa Bohol. Uh, around ilang minutes ang ferry? Less than 30. Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, for about one hour and uh, one hour. Four, okay. 40 minutes. One hour, 40 minutes ferry from Cebu to Bohol, Bohol. no? But now, kayo na nagiging superstar on your own. May mga sariling big resorts na rin kayo na itatayo. So, maybe you could... Uh, mamaya, I will ask you to invite all our audience since malalapit na rin tayo dito sa Bohol. Thank you so much, Mayor Eddie. Yes, now, I will go to, uh, of course, Mayor Sol. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Sino dito nakapunta na sa Siargao? Taas ng kamay. Don't you just... Yes! <laughs> Look at those hands, ma'am. Siargao has also helped in putting the Philippines in the map of the world. I know for a fact of what happened to Siargao because of Typhoon Odette. Have we recovered? Are we open? I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> well, <clears throat> In a scale of 1 to 10, we're on 7. We're about to fully recover. But we're 7 already. We're getting there. We're getting there. Resorts are opening. And just to let you know, in the my sector, surprisingly, even if medyo rustic ang dating ng Siargao, in the my sector, I've been getting clamors. Gusto namin ng incentive meetings, events sa Siargao. Bukas na ba? Bukas na ba? Ay, nako. Uh, we really lack some facilities at the moment. Uh, we cannot accommodate big events, but we are trying our best to put up these facilities in due time. Okay. I hope you don't mind me asking, because back then there was a big news, you know, uh, about the hospital of Shergao being accident. How is the hospital now? Is it? Ah, can you give okay. us the news? Yeah, we're even... Uh, this is the project of Congressman Bingo. It's now a medical center managed by National DOH. So the services, meron na. Meron na. The services will be leveled up and for sure the tourists would be confident enough to be there. So that's the good news everyone. We have that medical center na. Pag nag-surfing kayo sa Siargao at medyo nahulog-hulog, don't worry. Meron don't na. worry, don't worry. We take care of you. We'll take care of all of you. Okay, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, what is this with Shargao that keeps its charm? Kung baga, hindi siya the most uh, smart city, di ba? Hindi naman siya ganon. But you've, you're, you were able to really attract the right people to come and the talent of Shargao is making people stay long, di ba? Hindi lang siya pang three days, two nights. Four days minimum na yan. Seven, eight days, tumatagal hanggang one month. Like what is it with Shargao? It's home to them. It's home. And if it's home, it's where the heart is. Kasi enjoy sila sa simple uh, 
the natural beauty of the place, hospital, just like Panglao, people are so friendly. But maybe because of the peace and order situation that they feel safe all the time. You can just have your uh, night uh, activity without thinking of anything that would happen to you. It's the peaceful situation that we have in the island. Peaceful and the feeling of safety. Feeling you can just safe. walk in the middle yeah. of the street and the beach yeah. at night. At night. I know this because I did it at night. I did it at night. safety. Approved, ma'am. But until 12 midnight. Because there is a curfew. There is a curfew. There is a curfew. Okay. Ito, side comment lang ha. If you ever been to Siargao, have you walked on sa road nila? Nang street? Kung saan may mga restaurants? Yeah. Mayor, pati aso ninyo ang gaganda. Oh, Kahit na mga askal, ang lilinis, ang tataba. Malinis talaga ang Siargao. Even you go from east to west, north to south. It's clean. It's clean. Well it's, fed na rin It's sila. clean, it's green, it's so beautiful and you feel uh, restful. Parang if you want to have an R&R, and &R, R &R, you yes. go to Siargao. You, go to, you just made a slogan right there. Yeah. <laughs> Pang summer R&R. &R. Okay. Eddie, I'm going to be asking you uh, things that you've observed to move into the future okay, of tourism. Things that you have observed in the ASEAN countries, looking outside of the Philippines. What has changed? Is sustainability real or is it just a buzzword? Because today I witnessed, if you notice, ladies and gentlemen, ang mga awardees natin, everyone making an effort for sustainable travel and they're being recognized. So is it just greenwashing? Is it just a buzzword or it's really happening? This is the future of travel. I think it's happening. I think awareness among travelers uh, visiting destination now, they are already more educated and they are aware on whether destination is really sustain taking any, any activities related to sustainability. I think that's one thing. And on top of that, of course, in some way, when we check, because there was also a survey, when we check whether they are willing to contribute on certain payment, because in airlines, for example, now, we are, in some airlines, they are already applying for carbon offsetting, for example. Uh, yes, carbon offsetting, yes. even more environmental fees, yes. Yeah, yeah. But when we talk about paying, they're still not into that. No? Except for maybe uh, uh, for traveling from European countries, which are they are more aware about consciousness about sustainability True. itself. What practices are you seeing? What other practices that are you seeing, whether from the hotel industry, even the restaurants maybe, or the airlines that you're seeing, tours in terms of sustainability? I think in terms of technology, for example, they are really using energy. Uh, renewable facility or technology, uh, even for hotels. How so? Uh, in, some, in some destination, in some hotel, they are already practicing that. Then, of course, uh, waste management is also another thing. Try to use the uh, equipment that is renewable as well. Uh, I think that's the approach that we've been seeing in many industries being applied in, in, in some countries. Okay, and these are all applicable to the Philippines. You know, sometimes it's really great to see the perspective of others. Diba? That's why we travel, to learn, actually, and to be inspired. Mayor Boy, you've told us that, syempre, thank you for sharing the chismis, na true story talaga. Okay, chismis is rumors, Eddie. Okay, so I was sharing the, the good news that I know there's a lot of big investments going to Panglao and going to Bohol in terms of infrastructure, hotels, so on and so forth. Mayor Boy, where do you see Bohol five to ten years from now? Uh, well, uh, five to ten years from now, uh, before I proceed, uh, I will please uh, allow me to, to tell me about myself. Uh, I am from Panglao. I am born in Panglao, and then uh, I saw what is Panglao. Uh, before, Panglao was, uh, when I was young, Panglao was very, very dark, no lights, yeah, no tourists. And then uh, gradually it became a tourist spot because of the diving sites in uh, Balikasag 
and also in the mainland of Panglao. So the tourist attract the diving, the diving uh, activities and also uh, the snorkeling activities. So five to ten years from now, sa tingin niyo po ba, it will still be these water sports, hobbies that will attract or will there be something else? The food, the culture na mag attract sa mga turista? Five to ten years from now. Uh, Nag-attract nag sila dahil sa uh, culture ng tao. Tiga mga mabait yung mostly taga Panglao. They are uh, uh, very religious as I've said. And then... Uh, very honest, and also they are be, they are attract for those who are very nice uh, diving site and also the tourist uh, attraction. Thank you for that, Mayor. Okay, tanong ko lang dito. Who has been to Panglao, Bohol? Yes, de ba? Sumasakit ba? Real talk tayo, Mayor. Ang dagdamin mo. Kapag tinanong ang Pilipino, saan mo gusto pumunta? Hindi hindi Bohol ang sinasabi una. Ano ba dapat para, sabi ni Mayor, Cebu, Cebu, Cebu. Kayo naman, pati, pati, pati Boracay, tsaka Palawan minsan. Because, you know, I've always wondered about it. Panglao Bohol gives you the same thing that is truly world class in terms of the amenities that are ready already. The accessibility is there. You can do twinning like what I said, Cebu, Bohol. Mix it, you get two in one already. If you want, you can add other provinces, di ba? Ano yung, ano yung sa tingin ninyo, uh, Mayor? How do we capture that market? Para sure na, sure na. Pag nag Cebu, sure na ang Bohol din. Papasok ang mga turista. Ay yung pagpunta nila doon sa Panglao, kung pupunta talaga sila sa Cebu, tuloy-tuloy talaga sila sa Bohol. Bakit? Uh, mayroon doon, mayroon dito ng uh, Lobo, Lobo Cruz. Lobok River Cruz, oh, yes. Lobok River Cruz. Mayroon dito ng uh, Chocolate Hills. Uh, mayroon Mirror of the World sa Sikatuna. Kasi kung marami rin mga tourist attraction na makita doon sa Bohol. There's a lot to do. Oh, Huwag niyong kalimutan yung mga Tarshir. Baka oh. sumakit yung puso nila, atakihin sila. <laughs> Tarshir, di ba? Something to be truly proud about. You know, when we go out of the country and we tell people about our Tarshir, they get so shocked. Ang ganda kasi ng kwento eh. Ang Tarshir, pag hinawakan mo, ano nangyayari, Mayor? Matay. Namamatay. Ganun sila ka-sensitive. You really have to care for them. It's a truly unique, endemic species siya ng Philippines. Thank you so much, Mayor. Okay. Mayor Sol. I want to know five to ten years from now, where is Shergao heading? This is very important oh. ha, because the reason why foreigners come in droves to Shergao is because yung rawness niya. But as we all know in tourism, we have to balance diba? innovation, that raw beauty. So how are you doing that in Shergao? To keep them coming, but at the same time to progress. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to change... The I don't want to change anything in the environment. It's natural. It's protected. What I want to see in my island is uh, connectivity. That we should have a very good, uh, what you call it, communication system. That internet, because now it's the big, biggest problem. And I want to see my people happy contented without any problem of unemployment, underemployment. Everyone should have a job. That's what I see in the future. And I want them to enjoy the facilities that we would be putting up in the next, in the next 10 years. Like, for example, potable water system for all barangays, food security in all barangays, but buhay na matatag. In dream life that I want them to enjoy. So, yun ang makita ko. Okay, I like this. This is good news. I hope you heard that. And we will take you on your word. You will keep, you will keep the rawness, that beauty, nature, yeah. untouched. Untouched. What we will touch is connectivity. connectivity. Wi-Fi. We all need that. And I know this for sure because a lot of people go to Shargao. Lalo na yung mga work from home. Imbis na work from home, work in Shargao na lahat. 
They're all trying to use their laptops. They're all trying to connect. That's a wonderful promise, Mayor. Can we hold you on that? Yeah, I hope government would listen to prioritize Shargo because we have a lot of tourists coming in. It doubled when the pandemic, uh, the, during the pandemic, it went down to 40%, but now it went up to more than four, double. So I need help from the national government in terms of putting up the right facilities, steepies, whatever we need to improve the environment. Because the more tourists you have, the more problems you have in garbage management. Uh, waste management. Waste management. I, I, I believe there are already models around us that we yeah. can learn ahead from. Ma model cities that we can learn ahead from. Because before they come in droves, at least hopefully Shargao will be prepared. And it's good that you point that out. Waste management, no? Yeah, I, so, I need that because I feel the impact now of, of managing uh, this waste uh, ma materials. So I have to get uh, consultants to help me out in my efforts. And these are the real uh, issues to be tackled that goes along with growth. Yeah. Hindi lang siya growth, may ibang mga aspeto siya. Waste management, susten sustainability, uh, taking care of the community, so on and so forth. I wish you luck with that, and I know you can do it. I, I know you can. It. You are part of the government, Mayor, so you can. I That's will do it. You have it in you. you Shargao is well loved. No doubt. Siargao is my home, and I come from that island. I want to be the, in my full circle service. This is my last term. I will do my best to reach the dream that I set for my people. And we are with you. Thank you so much, Mayor Saul. Thank of course, you. Eddie, and of course to Mayor Boy. Let's give him a round of applause, please. May I invite you for a photo op? Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. That was just session one. And we had all the big names starting off already. Kindly smile for the camera so that five to 10 years from now, I will show you this picture. And we will talk about the difference that has been made. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Thank you so much to all our panelists for our first session talking about, of course, tourism. Mr. Eddie Somawiliga, I hope I pronounced that right, yes? Representing and flying in for us as well. Did you fly in? Okay, when are you flying out, sir? This afternoon. Which airline? Oh, I will not ask you. We have all the airlines here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Another round of applause for them, please. Okay, before we move on to our next 